Hello everyone, welcome back. And this week uh, I go to the Foggies, Frankie Off Grid, uh, to, to help them cap off their uh, big well beside the house. And uh, I also do a reinforced concrete lintel in the gym. So this week I should be preparing this bed, so I'll be removing the old uh, Corsal de Boy tomatoes, picking the last few of the cherries, and getting this ready for garlic and our winter brassicas. And I'll show you how to make a really easy. <laughs> Start again. And I'll... <laughs> and I'll show you how to make a really easy green tomato chutney. So I've got the van loaded again. Off to another secret location, and uh, I'll just see you when I get there. So secret location is <laughs> the Foggies. Um, today we're going to be capping off this well. I'm not going to show you everything. Just. Um, a few little bits of time lapse. Um, if you want to see more, check their video. I'm, I'm sure Chris will be filming most of it. So <laughs> here we go. Okay, so we've just carried the three beams, the big beams, up from down the bottom. And now I'm going to give Chris a little job oh. while me and you and move the stones over here. See these beams now? Mm -hmm. This bottom edge is where the blocks sit against. Yeah. So these you have to break off oh, okay. all that edge yeah. on all the beams. Just don't break the whole beam whenever yeah. you yeah. <laughs> no Or else the blocks won't fit in there. So there we go, top on. Bit of work to do yet, we've got to fill the outside edges. I think Ewan's going to put a ring of granite around, a bit higher, all the way around. And then we've got to put 100mm uh, concrete on with steel in it. Yeah, height of that hammer really. With steel in it and a trap door behind Carissa there for easy access. And there's going to be another trap door, like a boat uh, cabin door there. Um, but yeah, all good. Please? Yes, very. Very, very. Thank you for your help, as always, and knowledge. We'll be with you next week for some more help. <laughs> Dinner time. Dinner time. Here we go. <laughs> I'll put some uh, spinach down as well for them, and also some parsley. <laughs> Oh, it's like a veritable jungle in here. <laughs> There's a nice ripe tomato for the pigs. <laughs>
mad, we've still got flowers. I'm also going to be taking these tomatoes out as well because even though we have flowers we're not going to get enough sunshine to actually ripen them so we're going to pick if you have a delve through the undergrowth there's lots of green and ripe yellow ones so I shall pick all these and they will be used this week watch and see <laughs> So, I've brought you a barrel load of our very own black gall. Pre-composted by the chickens.
How you doing? Okay, just got this little bit here to just quickly scrape over and then you can chuck the gold, black gold on. And what's all this? Tomatoes. <laughs> the last picking. We have some cabbages. Yeah, the bed's all prepared now. Um, we've had to go and buy plugs of two different types of cabbage. Because the ants set And my we're going to put some garlic in as well. Because yeah. the ants set all the seeds. Everything we planted, every single one. Yep. So uh, we've had to buy these and we're going to just cheat and plant them in. And uh, yeah. Yep, that's it. And that's it. Nice and tight because they uh, actually have solid roots. A bit deep, am I? What do I know? Well, bear in mind I'm pushing it down. So. Is planted. And garlic. And garlic. How yeah. many garlic? I don't know, about 60. 60 garlic all in that end, yeah? There, yeah, and a few spread amongst. Really? Yeah, just to make it a bit. Oh, it echoes in it. Oh, oh. Um. Yeah, cuckoo, all right? Cuckoo! Oh, little wigs, And you get a little squeak as well. Come on. Ah, oh, these are little rough. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Even you squeak are getting better. <laughs>
So, you get hot more than once when you prepare firewood. You get hot when you cut it down. You get hot when you split it up. And you get hot when you burn it. So as you can probably hear and see, maybe not see, it's raining hard outside so indoor job day I've decided well we need to put a lintel over this doorway so um, I'll just explain quickly how we've gone about that. Okay so as you can see there's a, there's a bit of waste scrap timber board on the back of here and one here. This is a soffit, this will be the uh, shuttering basically either side of this soffit yeah uh, and I've drilled in into the blocks into the cavities in the blocks two bits of rebar 116 mil 112 mil yeah which go from side to side and they're supported on at least 150 mil each end yeah so what I'll do now is place my other piece of boarding against here yeah the other shutter so they've got uh, basically you've got a a gap for the concrete to go in and then a um, couple of days we've got a macro in the middle to support the weight uh, and this is pinched so I'll be screwing the other board into here so it's be pinched either side of this block yeah and then I'll probably put a clamp on the top here I'll show you the other side in a minute yeah so like I said it's just a piece of scrap timber uh, and I, here I fix it to the wall it's fixed there and it's fixed there um, so that can't come this way with the weight of concrete and obviously the aqua in the middle takes the weight of any concrete in the middle. Yeah so like I said I'll do the same on this side we'll put a board up there uh, fix it to the wall or clamp it to the wall using these clamps and we'll screw it as well through like this the other board has been here we'll screw through the board into this yeah, so it pinches it in tight here, and uh, and then fill it with concrete. And this will just sit on top of there, like so. And I'll put this clamp on here. Oh. I'll drill and fix that to the wall. And the same on this side, we'll put this clamp on. And then I'll screw into here. So there now as you can see we've created a uh, box basically with two bits of rebar in um, to fill with concrete. Yeah, hope you can see this good fairly self-explanatory. So yeah this we'll fill this with concrete now and then we'll have a cast in situ lintel.
little tap. Make all the air bubbles come to the top. That'll be fine. Good. And as it's been raining all day, I know Andrea's been in the kitchen. So let's go and see what she's doing. Right, for this recipe I'm using uh, about a kilo and a half of green tomatoes. Um, I've chopped them up, put them in the pan, and to that I'm adding a couple of onions, so about 200-250 grams of onions. Not overly precise, it's just easier than having quarter of an onion put in, so I'll put in two onions in there. Right, to that, got, I'm putting in four chilies. These are our own chilies. Um, I'm also going to put in a little piece of uh, ginger, some mustard seeds, um, about 200 grams of sugar and these are all the sultanas I've got so the packet was 250 so it's going to be about 200 grams of sultanas because I haven't got any more <laughs> so like I said these were our, or these are our own chilies we pick them and I put them in the freezer and they well obviously they keep for ages but I said literally just taking them out of the freezer and they already start to thaw really quickly so you know, they're hot chilies. They're hot chilies, but they you know it's like like they're almost fresh really, isn't it? You know, they're not yeah. but they, they smell really sweet, don't they? They're they're really nice, so so we do like a bit of zest and flavour. So we'll use up the four chilies in this. Okay, so I've got a piece of ginger, so I'm using our little, I don't know what it's called really, a garlic sort of ginger scrapery thing. Oh, I, don't know. Well, I don't know what it would be called, but it's a bit easier than uh, trying to chop it up, I think. Yeah. Right, this is all the, I'll say dry ingredients are now, so you can see the sugar, there's the uh, ginger. Uh, our little herbs and spices and bits and pieces. So, quick run through whilst I pour in. This is um, apple cider vinegar. Mine isn't ready yet, so I have to buy some. Important, it has to be 5%. It's really important that it's at least 5%. It just, for all your pickling and bits and pieces like that. So apparently there's um, some 4% stuff that's on sale. No good for any cooking or to do this sort of chutney type stuff. So in here we have, oh, and I've got to put in about 300 mils, so I'm going to go down to about here. Because I don't want to pour it into a jug no. to pour it into there. It doesn't have to be absolutely spot on. But for this recipe, I have one and a half kilos of our green tomatoes. I've used two onions chopped. For variety, I used a white onion and a red onion. I've also got 250 grams of brown sugar, um, 200 grams of sultanas, a couple of teaspoons of mustard seeds, uh, four chilies, 
a teaspoon of fennel seeds, about a teaspoon of salt. Um, we used a like a, a good gnarly piece size of ginger which we crushed up and like I said and then our ACV goes in a little bit more and then we start to cook it down so this gets cooked down and we want to, to get a good bit of heat into it first and then it'll get the heat will reduce down and as I say it jowdles for a good while then so the kitchen is soon going to be smelling very chutney <laughs> if there's such a word right so I've just sterilized the jars now this is a uh, interesting little toy I have now so once it gets up to temperature it holds on to the temperature so it has a keep warm um, what's the word? F not facility, um... Function! Function! <laughs> God, unlike my brain. Um, so once it gets up to the temperature that it needed, no, it from. It just clicks over to keep warm. So a big, big thank you to Sandra and Raymond for that gift. Yes. Of this thing. Um, I'm too short. <laughs> and it needs to be taller. Yes, it's designed for Dutch people. <laughs> I can't reach the bits. Also, a big shout out to Raymond and Sandra for the jar, hot jar tongs and the little funnel thing that goes on top of the jars. Like so. Brilliant stuff. Yes, make, you, made it a lot easier for me. Thank you. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh dear, right. Nerves have been on camera. So hot chutney into hot jars. Just need to get a glovey thing in. Bloop, bloop. Right, the little, I don't actually, so, pop thing. It's making a noise because it's reheating. So obviously I had the lid off when I took everything out. So it's heating back up to temperature, but I'm now going to take the lid off again to put these guys back in. So so not quite a full pot, so he'll be used first. How long now? About 20 minutes. There you go. Green tomato chutney. And now, for special something, treat. Show me, show me, show me. Something completely different. We have a jar of boiled eggs. Pickled eggs for Christmas. Yay. Yay. We now have cooled pickling spice. Oh, I haven't put any... Yes, I did put chilli flakes in it, didn't I? Yes. yes. Oh, good job I remembered, otherwise it'd be very chilly. Really. So, just move you over a little bit. Get me. And so I'm going to pour this over. Should we get all the herbs and stuff in as well? Perfect. Perfect amount. Come our little coriander seeds. So leave them for well. Well, it uh, should. I don't think they'll last till Christmas. Well, they need to be jowdled for at least a month, really, yeah, okay. to get some good flavours. Okay. So, Mr. Saunders. Yes. There we go. Pickled eggs as well. So it's the next morning, uh, what I'm going to do is take these clamps off
and then we'll unscrew this face and uh, have a look, see what it looks like. This is the reveal. See, this is where I need a drum kit so I can do a drum roll. Yes. Um, <laughs> it'll be fine. Ta da! Oh, that's not too bad, is it? Yep, so there we go. Obviously you saw the two bits of rebar in there, so uh, I'll leave this in because until this cure it, till this goes this colour and uh, then we'll strip the soffit. But I'll take it off, I'll take the board off the other side as well. And there it is from the other side. So now we're just ready to carry on building the blocks up to the roof level. There we go. So, Angie's just off, there she is, off, Angie's just off to get the food for the pigs, uh, I'm here with the pigs but I'll show you around their area and uh, what they've done and, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do. So, step on my shoelaces, I haven't got any food for you yet. Oh. So it would seem that they've uh, <laughs> this isn't a good idea. So yeah, um, there's not a lot of vegetation left down here. As you can tell, they're really hungry. All the, all the. Um, Deer spreader, uh, persimmons have fallen off a tree, so they've obviously eaten all them as well. And um, they're going to eat me in a minute. So what we're doing is moving to their winter quarters. Oh. Because we need them out of here for when we harvest all the olives. Yeah. So you can't have pigs like this underneath um, making holes in all your olive nets can you? No you can't. So here we go. Uh, our first attempt at moving, uh, moving a chicken. Alright? Okay here we go. So you see how easy it is to move pigs. Hungry ones. Yeah. Come on in. Pigs. 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 Working so far. Oh no, it's not. It's failing. Pigs. 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 Come on.
So, now the wind's picking up relatively ooh, successful. They're all in this area now. We've got to do some stuff to the gate there. I'm just going kind to of get the food bowls. I've tipped a lot of fruit in the grass here. So, they're after that in a minute. And um, there's lots of vegetation here for them, everywhere. And they've been in here before. This is their winter residence. And I see chickens have been in here as well. The two stray chickens we have, but it's all nice and dry, lots of bedding, so cool. Yeah, and there to see the beautiful goats. <laughs> So it's been raining. It's we, get a, we get uh yeah, loads of fire salamanders now. And this one's got tangled up in cobwebs <laughs> and things, so right, I'll, 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 yeah. right, come on mate. So, look at the state of you, mate. Come on. Let's see if we can get some of this off him. Oh, look at that, he's a right state. <laughs> Where'd he been crawling? No, that's better, isn't it? Didn't look happy. No. <laughs> but again, I wouldn't have picked him up if I didn't have gloves on, no. though, because they're not... Um, and also we need to keep him away from the animals. Yeah. So, I shall put him... OK, so, as you can tell, it's raining. It's sort of, um, to use a cricket term, rain stop play. So, uh... The pond's filling up again. The pond's <laughs> full, the pool, full again. Um, so we'll have to call it a day there guys, thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing and thanks for ringing that notification <laughs> bell. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. Get the cladding for that and wait, still waiting for it. Oh, mate.